Thank you for tuning into this bite-sized learning on enhanced barrier precautions. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to describe the burden of multi-drug resistant organisms or MDROs in nursing homes, define enhanced barrier precautions, identify which residents and activities meet the criteria for enhanced barrier precautions, and discuss best practices for implementing enhanced barrier precautions. The prevalence of multi-drug resistant organisms or MDROs continues to increase in healthcare settings in the United States. Residents in nursing homes are at an increased risk of becoming colonized and developing infections with MDROs. More than 50% of nursing home residents may be colonized with an MDRO. Nursing homes have been the setting for MDRO outbreaks, and when these MDROs result in resident infections, limited treatment options are available. Focusing only on residents with active infection fails to address the continued risk of transmission from residents with MDRO colonization. MDRO colonization may persist for long periods of time, which contributes to the silent spread of MDROs. With the need for an effective response to the detection of serious antibiotic resistant threats, there is growing evidence that the traditional implementation of contact precautions in nursing homes is not enough for most residents for the prevention of MDRO transmission, thus a need for enhanced barrier precautions. This graph does an excellent job of displaying the burden of MDROs in nursing homes. In a study conducted in Orange County, California, based on 14 nursing homes, the percentage of documented MDRO was 17%, when actually more than half, or 58% of the residents had an actual MDRO. In ventilated capable nursing homes, the percentage of documented MDROs was 20%, when in actuality, 76% of residents had an MDRO. This further shows that MDROs can spread long before detection. As I mentioned earlier, MDRO transmission is common in nursing home facilities, contributing to substantial resident morbidity, mortality, and increased healthcare costs. With the need for an effective response to the detection of serious antibiotic resistant threats, there is growing evidence that the traditional implementation of contact precautions in nursing homes is not feasible for most residents for prevention of MDRO transmission, which leads to enhanced bear precautions. Enhanced bear precautions expand the use of PPE and refer to the use of gowns and gloves during high contact resident care activities that provide opportunities for transfer of MDROs to staff's hands and clothing. MDROs may be indirectly transferred from resident to resident during these high contact care activities. Nursing home residents with wounds and indwelling medical devices are at especially high risk of both acquisition of and colonization with MDROs. The use of gowns and gloves for high contact resident care activities is indicated when contact precautions do not otherwise apply. For nursing home residents with wounds and or indwelling medical devices, regardless of MDRO colonization, as well as for residents with MDRO infection or colonization. Examples of high contact resident care activities requiring gown and glove use for enhanced barrier precautions include dressing, bathing and showering, transferring, providing hygiene, changing linens, changing briefs or assisting with toileting, device care or use, which includes central line, urinary catheter, feeding tube, tracheostomy, and ventilator, wound care, which involve any skin opening requiring a dressing. In general, gowns and gloves would not be required for resident care activities other than those listed above, unless otherwise necessary for adherence to standard precautions. 
Residents are not restricted to their rooms or limited from participation in group activities. Because enhanced barrier precautions do not impose the same activity and room placement restrictions as contact precautions, they are intended to be in place for the duration of a resident's stay in the facility or until resolution of the wound or discontinuation of the indwelling medical device that placed them at a higher risk. It may be a little confusing when to implement contact precautions and enhance barrier precautions. This chart can be extremely helpful in differentiating between the two. So enhanced barrier precautions applies to all residents with any of the following. Infection or colonization with a novel or targeted MDRO when contact precautions do not apply. Wounds and or indwelling medical devices such as central line, urinary catheter, feeding tube, tracheostomy, regardless of MDRO colonization status. Facilities may consider applying enhanced barrier precautions to residents infected or colonized with other epidemiologically important MDROs based on facility policy. For contact precautions, this applies to all residents infected or colonized with a novel or targeted multidrug resistant organism in specific situations. These include the presence of acute diarrhea, draining wounds or other sites of secretions or excretions that are unable to be covered or contained, and on units or in facilities where ongoing transmission is documented or suspected. These include infections such as C. diff, norovirus, scabies, and other conditions where contact precautions are recommended. When implementing enhanced bear precautions, PPE should be used for these situations. During high contact resident care activities such as dressing, bathing and showering, transferring, providing hygiene, changing linens, changing briefs or assisting with toileting, device care or use, again, central line, urinary catheter, feeding tube, tracheostomy or ventilator, wound care, which involves any skin opening requiring a dressing. For contact precautions, PPE should be used at any room entry. Enhanced bear precautions applies to use gloves and gown prior to the high contact care activity. Enhanced bear precautions does not require single rooms and it does not require restrictions of movement and participation within the facility policy. For contact precautions, gloves and gowns are needed. This includes consideration for a single room or cohorting and includes restriction of movement and participation in group activities within the facility. This chart provides a great summary of PPE use and room restriction when caring for residents in nursing homes under the following precautions, standard precautions, enhanced barrier precautions, and contact precautions. Thank you to our partners, the Georgia Department of Public Health and the University of Georgia in supporting Alliant Health. This presentation would not be possible without their continued support. Thank you for listening to this bite-sized learning. If you have any questions, you may contact the patient safety team at patientsafety@alliantehealth.org or any individual team members. You can follow Alliant Health Solutions on many of our social media pages, including Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for your time and attention, and I hope you found this presentation helpful.